Good evening and welcome to the Midland Board of Education's regular scheduled meeting on October 22nd, 2012. Madam Secretary, would you call roll please? Yes, President Malt. Here. Vice President Wasserman. Here. And I'm here, Treasurer Oley. Here. Member Brandstad. Here. Member Borton. Here. And Member Kaminsky. Here. Well, we have a modest consent agenda this evening. Does anybody see anything they would like removed from the consent agenda or have a question? If not, we'll begin with the consent agenda. 2.1 is the approval of the minutes from Monday, October 8th. 2.2 is the following recommended for employment for the 2012-13 school year. 2.3 is the uh, following staff members have announced their resignation if the dates indicated. 2.4 is the approval of school bill systems bill for the system September 2012. 2.4B is the listing of purchase orders exceeding $3,000. 2.4C, the listing of purchase card transa transactions exceeding $3,000. Move of approval of consent items 2.1 through 2.4. Support. Moved by Mr. Oley, support by Mr. Washman. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda is approved. Request to address the board. We have any time anybody in the audience would like to publicly address the board at this time now would be that time seeing no takers we will close that s section and move on to curriculum instructions with uh, I believe dr. Kaminsky's report first from CASA okay uh, we had met on uh, October 15th and we had met over at Dow High School uh, myself attended uh, Miss Baker mr. Ellinger uh, dr. Ellison mr. Malt uh, sitting in for um, for one of our, our members and uh, Mr. Verlindy. Um, we went over major change proposals. Uh, Dr. Ellison presented five major change proposals uh, for discussion. Uh, these proposals included, number one, our request for the final stage of the secondary mathematics program realignment. This creates a new course option of AP Calculus AB. Number two, a request for a second scheduling option for advanced biology. A building could select to set schedule the course one hour over two years or two hours over one year. Number three, a request to consider the implementation of a new tech program. A request for developing the new uh, project base units needed for the pr new tech program. Number four, a request to approve the expansion of the IB program. Uh, approval will allow the continued move uh, forward uh, towards impl implementation of the primary year's program. The committee discussed the proposals and suggested some modifications. Uh, the proposals will now be reviewed and prioritized by the major change proposal committee. Those, proposal, uh, those proposals meeting uh, the standard of reasonable and necessary uh, will be brought forward for consideration to the full board on Monday, October 22nd. The committee was reminded that implementation of any proposal is dependent upon the availability of funds. Uh, we had a chance to visit one of the classes at uh, Dow High School. Uh, the theory of knowledge class uh, which is very lively we had a chance to interact with the students which was uh, really neat to do um, and, and I, I really cherish that opportunity to, to see what goes on in the classroom and, and work with the students some very very uh, uh, inquisitive and, and engaging students um, so the committee mem members moved to Sarah Penn cost theory of knowledge a six-hour class there are two sections this year of TOK uh, everyone enjoyed listening to the class discussion of the uh, of the limitations of surveys due to the points of view of participants and of those reflecting on the results. Near the end of the class, this was the students uh, had asked us some questions. I think I took the and gave the first answer and the question was something to the effect of do we, when we develop our curriculum, do we use more our right brain or left brain? And I'd answer that with, well, um, any sort of science and, and uh, uh, sort of the, the rigor of mathematics, we uh, maximize that with our creativity for innovation. and. Uh, I, I didn't think about it, but I should have mentioned that music uses both sides of the brain, which is really a unique uh, attribute of uh, music. Um, so um, we, uh, we, had, we had just kind of some neat um, opinions expressed of our own on uh, uh, why the curriculum includes so many years of math and so forth, and we explained to them that we uh, don't have many options, but we try to look at uh, a curriculum that, that allows for students to develop a wide range of skills as they prepare for career and college ready. Um, so the committee returned to the conference room. We discussed uh, the program successes and challenges with Ms. Pankost. Uh, she emphasized the integral nature of the student profile and its huge impact on students and their learning. This year, uh, this year, students 
began the year uh, using the primary year profile version, moved to the middle years version, and now guided by the high school version. <coughs> she, su she su suggested that she sees uh, student growth in taking ownership of individual learning and critical thinking skills and compassion and caring for others and in communication. Ms. Ms. Pankost has done an impressive job leading students in their learning. Uh, she reported teaching this class has changed how I teach and uh, all my other classes. Uh, it is about engagement and ownership of learning. <coughs> uh, the committee expressed their appreciation for her efforts and accomplishments. Um, our next meeting uh, will be at November, uh, November 19th at the Juvenile Care Center. Thank you. <coughs> Dr. Callison. Thank you, Mr. Malta. This evening I do have uh, just a, actually Miss he did such a wonderful job, I hardly have anything left to talk about, but we do have five major change proposals. We do this annually and most of you who have been on the board or some of you who are veterans know that each year in the fall these major change proposals are our method systemically to bring changes that people would like to see to the curriculum. And this year we have five proposals. Uh, the proposals come uh, through the system. They are reviewed by the Major Change Proposal Committee, and they are <coughs> judged and prioritized based on a rubric that we have. All of these proposals have met that uh, criteria and are here before you tonight. As mentioned earlier, we recognize that your approval of these proposals after consideration for at least 28 days will also be your uh, conceptual approval, but that based on the budget, we may or may not be able to really move forward with everything that we have here. The numbers that you see in this proposal tonight are really for the year 13-14, and the uh, full proposals are available, have been reviewed by the uh, CAS committee, and certainly if you'd like to see more detail, that, that's also available. In addition to that, we have two, propos or two uh, presentations that we'll ask I've asked people to do for you. So you can have the opportunity to really ask any questions directly of uh, those fully at the um, source of the programs. Next board meeting, Randy Shadig will be here to talk about the new tech program. And tonight you see Luann Bensinger and uh, Dr. Lipset here to present to you on the primary years program. So they'll be giving you the really the, the skinny on this uh, proposal at that time. Well, let's go back to the first one, the mathematics proposal. This is, believe it or not, the seventh year that I have come to you with major change proposals to realign the math program. The very first ones came to you in 06-07, and we started that first change in 7-8 to modify the mathematics uh, alignment. And this is the last change that I'll be bringing you in that series, and it adds an AP Calculus AB version. As you may know, we've had Calculus BC forever here at Midland, but we never had a Calculus AB. So next year, with your approval after due consideration, we would add this as an option for our students and add the AP, AB Calculus to our Calculus BC. There is an AP test. Someone asked that at curriculum study, so we, um, we did verify that. And in fact, it is an AP course as well. The second major change is to add a scheduling option. For many years, we have had the option of offering advanced bio in two hours over one year. That has uh, begun to create some issues for students. In addition, the IB program likes to have what they call concurrency of learning, and that is continued learning over two years, as opposed to fitting it all into one. So I'm asking for your consideration for a, an additional scheduling option. The option would be selected by the building, and then each building would determine which option fits for them, and they would choose that one. Um, proposals number three and four are both around new tech. Uh, you've heard lots about new tech. Many of you have done visitations of new tech. And you can see that the first one is implementation of the program, and the second one is around the course development. And as I said, next board meeting, Randy Shadig will be here to present a proposal uh, review for that. And the final one is the addition of the primary use program, which will not really change what we learn in the elementary, but change the way in which we would learn it. And as I said, we have our presenters here this evening to talk with you about that in a few minutes. Do you have any questions of me before we move into the proposal? 
Go ahead. Yeah. I do have a, a quick question. Kathy, um, I know you're going to talk about the new tech next time, and I don't want to go in the weeds there. And you talked about all these spending things to be 13, 14. Correct. Would the course development be 13, 14, or would that be this year? The course development will start in, in July. We'll do some this year. Okay. Uh, we have some expenditures this year. We've taken some trips. Yep. We have another one planned. And we will begin some of that this year. Um, for both of those, we really felt like we didn't, of course, want to move forward until the board expresses their formal wishes on those. So we've done a pretty much what we think we can, and we'd like to okay. get your approval before we move any further. I just have one comment. I filled in uh, at this meeting on the building, um, on the science piece. Um, I, I just want to say that I like the concept simply because it gives buildings the flexibility to uh, allow to, uh, their schedules to fit what works best for them, and I think that's important. So um, we're not sitting uh, up here thinking that we have a better idea of what they need in their buildings, and I like that very much. And so that's part of that uh, change there for, uh, for those of you that uh, may or may not need a further explanation on that one. So anything else? Okay. Ladies. <coughs> These two ladies are the co-chairs of the subcommittee of the International Baccalaureate Advisory Team. And as I have made presentations to you before, we have three subcommittees, one for the diploma program, one for the middle years, and their committee on the primary years program. So I will let them tell us their story. Welcome. Thank you, and good evening. Um, as Kathy said, um, I'm Luann Bensinger, Curriculum Specialist for English Language Arts and World Language. And Dr. Lipset um, and myself as co-chairs, she is the principal, obviously, at Adams Elementary School. So how did we get here, coming before you tonight? Um, as a direct result of the International Baccalaureate Action Committee in 2010, an IB advisory team was formed. And from that advisory team, subcommittees were formed to look further into the full programming of the International Baccalaureate Program. So as we have DP now, or Diploma Program, we were looking into PYP, the Primary Years Program, and also to MYP, the Middle Years Program. Linda and I obviously are just going to talk to the Primary Years Program tonight. And in front of you, you should have a folder that we've prepared for you. Um, to give you extra information and to refer to um, this evening. Our PYP committee consisted of teachers, elementary teachers, administrators, and parents. We had probably, I, th I believe it was 17 with us last year. We met five times and discussed and explored what primary years program actually is. Um, Dr. Lipset, Dr. Ellison, and myself um, had the privilege to take a visit to a primary years program in Fenton to further inform ourselves and to be able to come back to share. When we finished with that committee in the spring, it was a unanimous decision by that committee to try to move forward um, and do more exploration to see how we might move ahead with the primary years program. We have started meeting with our committee again this year, which has grown. We are now at about 26 people, um, including the same makeup we had before of administrators, parents, teachers, and one community member as well. So why PYP? <coughs> Strong district testing results have been what we've seen for a while, but we have we do have a trend that we have flatlined as far as achievement goes on an overall district basis. So as we look at PYP, this is a program that is grounded in best practices. It's focused on the whole child and is put forward with inquiry-based learning. So inquiry-based is based around students' questions. It's not about what is just given to them for information. It's about them making decisions about their own learning. It requires students to work together as problem solvers. And the teacher is the person who helps them along in the process of discovering their knowledge. 
which is a little shift from maybe where we've been before. And this is where sometimes a misconception comes, and that is the primary years program is for all students and all teachers. It is a building-wide program. So all curricular areas are involved, and that includes auxiliaries as well. We might sometimes see a misconception because when we look at the diploma program, students have the choice of taking a pathway to um, receive a diploma or a certificate or take the classes or choose a different pathway. The PYP program would be different in that all students would take part in that program. And just another understanding is that if this is a direction we were to choose to go, this is not somebody else's program. This, is a, this would be a Midland Public Schools program. So we've just talked about inquiry-based and then thinking about it being um, based on and grounded in best practices. That would include differentiated instruction, which you have heard groups before talking about. We have had proposals to um, put forth differentiated instruction to meet the needs of all of our students. Um, high level of student involvement. There's no hiding out here because every student is involved in their own learning. So they are all active and engaged with what they are learning um, through their units. We look at Common Core State Standards where my cohorts and myself came to last year to present on um, the Common Core Standards. There is no doubt that those are largely based upon the best practices and the type of learning that goes on in the International Baccalaureate program. They've literally lifted a big part of that from what students do and learn in the IB programs. Um, I think it was last January we were all together at the library um, for 21st century learning. As we look at 21st century learning skills, those are aligned and embedded very deeply in the PYP program. You have before you a chart that is called the IB Learner Profile Integration. This includes the profile itself. What it doesn't include on here, though, are the attitudes. And those really touch on those soft skills that we look at in 21st century that we've talked about, those good habits of success. So aligned very, very tightly. So PYP brings strong engagement and relevance to the students as learners. So the cornerstone of PYP rests on the value of lifelong learning. Two essential concepts support this value, and that's the learner profile and the IB attitudes. And those are the two parts that do connect all of the IB programs. It connects from PYP, the MYP, and DP. They all rotate around this um, piece of this cornerstone for IB. So again, those 21st century um, learning skills, if you think back to the logo that Jeff Lauer designed for that um, presentation that we had, I think you'll be surprised to see the pieces in that and, and how tightly they align when we look at these two pieces. You think of that commitment and grit that we talked about, students being able to stay with their work, the cooperation for um, projects that students do, um, that creativity, and I think of a quote from <coughs> that presentation that night that Mr. Ellinger gave, and it said, creativity must be practiced and cultivated within the learning process. And that is truly where we start in those early years um, with a PYP program. And then again, applying knowledge learned to meaningful and relevant instruction and situations. As we look at these units that we talk about, the integrated curricular units, Dr. Lipset's going to move further into those in just a few moments. But gone are the days of themes and units of apples and penguins and more about themes that are meaningful and linked to the outside world that move beyond the classroom. So creating inquiry, I think about one of the units called Sharing the Planet. And this is one of the integrated curricular units that is part of the PYP program. 
And just to give you some context for the units that Dr. Lipset will talk about in just a minute, I thought I would just give you a quick example. So sharing the planet, the inquiry into the rights and responsibilities and the struggle to share finite resources with other people and living things, communities, and the relationships within and between them, access to equal opportunities, and working out conflict resolution. That's the umbrella part of that unit. Then it goes to the topic, which sharing the planet, this one topic, an example would be water. The central idea is that water is essential to life, and it is a limited resource for many people. Then they move to inquiry. How might they do that? What types of questions might they want to answer? Well, the necessity of water for living things might be one. Important facts and information about water, how we use it, sources, cycles, distribution, treatment, and responsible use of water. And I think of that, that's actually one that's written at the kindergarten level. That's a lot of good thinking for young students to do. So as we think about those integrated units that Dr. Lipset will share, you can think about the overall big unit and then picking from that a topic of study, which in this instance would be water. There's a central idea and then those lines of inquiry that are developed by the students. And then the last part is take, taking action as a result of what you've learned. So that might be a follow-up that will impact either their school or community. Um, and now we'll move forward and learn some more about these units. Okay, so what I think is really interesting about the PYP piece, and I think that's really important to remember, uh, Ms. Benzinger had shared this already, but it is for all students. It is not for a select group, it is for all students and therefore it's for all teachers as well. And I think that's the one exciting component um, with the PYP that's a little bit different from the high school piece is that it's building that culture in the building and working together. So then it's how do they do that? Under the IB um, piece for the primary years program, they have six units uh, that they would like teachers to work on aligning their curriculum underneath these big ideas. And those ideas are who we are, where we are in place and time, how we express ourselves, how the world works, how we organize ourselves, and sharing the planet. So they're big and they're broad. And the learning piece is teachers coming together and taking the, the skills and expectations that we have through Midland Public Schools and through our state, uh, through the Common Core, and aligning that underneath. How would we get the skills taught that we're looking at under those big themes, helping kids make connections really in a larger venue, um, really taking it outside the classroom, into our community, and then into the world at large. But knowing that at the elementary level, for kindergartners, it's really trying to get outside their classroom and then into their community. Bringing people in, having more opportunities for speakers and more connections with the community, building that foundation piece, which you know we try and work very hard at right now. But this just gives more consistency, more opportunities, and builds that building discussion that we're doing it together. I think that's probably the part that's most exciting to me is thinking about it not being just within a classroom, which lots of great things are going on there and people are working on these pieces, but throughout a building and then really pulling our buildings together and having that common thread throughout the district. The, um, the learner profile that Ms. Benzinger shared with you, great things in there. And, and really when you look at that, what would you not want your child to, to have for those particular pieces? Um, but it's us working together and having that as the focus for the learner. Oh, okay, I'm showing my... Here we go. All right, so when we look at it and we put it all together, this slide is really trying to put those pieces together as far as the themes, um, who we are, where we are, the attitudes that we've talked about, the appreciation, that commitment, the confidence, the curiosity, the learner profile, the transdisciplinary skills, which are the social skills, the research skills, the thinking skills, communication, self-management, but really with this slide in particular, I like the key concepts. Um, they're important to note. They include questions surrounding form, function, change, causation, connection, perspective, responsibility, and reflection. Those are a lot bigger ideas than um, 
than some of the things that we've spent spending time on, and particularly with the reflection piece. How are kids applying it, and how are they making it relevant to their lives? And doing that at an early age. It doesn't need to be middle school where they're starting to branch out, um, but, but taking it from that smaller person um, to help them see those connections. It will make it more interesting for them, gives them a good foundation for developing um, some critical thinking skills, some problem solving in some really relevant ways. It's also that inquiry-based piece. Um, and, and one thing that Dr. Kaminsky mentioned earlier in reflecting upon the IB piece at the high school level and Sarah Pentecost was teachers' own reflection on how just going through the process has changed the way they think about things and they do things. So while these themes or integrated units are throughout the school year, it really, you know, they're not all day every day. It's a component, but it's building that venue of thinking, that way of teaching, and that way of encouraging our children to think and learn that really is the bigger picture. That, to me, is the transfer part that will carry them as they, as they travel along the road to learn, whether it's onto a middle years program down the road or the IB program at the high school. Those pieces and in, 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 the, in their interactions in the world at large. So I think that that's a very exciting part of it. This is just another way, honestly, of looking at sort of the same thing, except it brings in those different um, core areas, the math, the science, the arts, physical education, language, social studies. It's all an integrated part of it. It is not select. If you were teaching an auxiliary class, if you're a resource teacher, you're a part of it. It is not segmenting things, and it's um, really focusing on pulling everybody together as a team. Just another way to look at it. But the core piece with this one I really like because it has that learner at the center. And really that's our focus and that's our goal. So looking back with this, it is an additional curriculum. There aren't additional assessments like they do at the high school where you test and you have to send it out. It isn't any of that. It is taking what we already do and pulling it together under these questioning techniques and development so that students are able to um, improve in student engagement, draw it to the outside world and have more opportunities with that critical thinking and, and more project-based learning that our core standards in the 21st century skills are asking us to do. So it aligns with that particularly well. Um, the component of language, one of the pieces with the primary years, the big piece is that the language, they must have a second language opportunity. Well, for Midland, that's easy. It's already in place. For some places, that's a struggle with getting this on board, especially in, in the times that we're in. But that's a piece that we have. And really emphasizing that positive attitude toward learning. But that comes from having students more engaged and more excited and, and being kind of the drivers. So that's a piece of that. Builds that balance between learning and content. Again, things that we've already talked about this evening, the problem solving skills, the critical thinking skills. It is an instructional shift in that it's providing more in-depth learning experiences. That's probably the bigger piece of this. Change is found in integrating content areas across curricular areas with a broader focus of connecting that learning to the world beyond the classroom. So when looking at this proposal specifically, We talked about for this year, this is our committee has been in place for a couple of years now. So for this year, our goal has been to get out and to do more school observations. And as we move forward with this year, there's um, an opportunity through the staff development proposal that was worked on last year and approved to send some teachers to training. And we're sending a teacher from each elementary school to Cincinnati in December for a, a training on the first level of IB. Um, they'll have opportunity to observe there and, and learn about that and then bring it back. Um, and that would be the piece. And then if opportunity is available for us to move forward at the end of this year, that's when we would look at designating a coordinator. That is one piece that's a, a requirement with the primaries year program is they do need a coordinator at the building level. It doesn't have to be one per building. We're looking at um, the recommendation has been for one person to work with schools, with the first three schools being trained. And they help with filling out the applications, talk about the facilitating of the professional development piece, work with teachers on their curriculum and helping them weave that in and just have that outside um, support. So that would be something that would be new. So moving forward, that would need to be in place for next year. That wouldn't be a this year piece. So the proposal for as we move forward was the idea that the committee really felt very strongly that 
with the skills and the learner profile and the pieces that you're trying to build within children, that every child should have that opportunity if we as a district would choose to move forward with it. I um, felt pretty strongly about that. So in balancing that, thinking about next year, um, having three elementary schools begin to move forward with that process with the training, and then the following year, it would be the last, the remaining four. But it isn't an overnight process. It's a several year process. There's a timeline. Um, if it isn't in your packet, we can certainly get one to you. But the idea with the training is they go to training, they come back, they start looking at just one unit and trying to develop that integrated unit and put that in place by year's end. That would be the goal for next year. Um, and then the application for Canada C to, to be, for your request to be a primary year, year's program designated as such as it is a two-year process. 2014, 2015, again, that would be back to those remaining four elementary schools and on and really it's just mirroring the, the piece that we just spoke of. So it is a two-year process that we're looking at beginning that implementation. Um, the proposal was look with the, with the funding piece was written for one year for next year only. Uh, training would look different. It could look different depending upon the economic ability and the availability of funding. It may be that one teacher from each grade level would go and come back and work with staff. That's how it is done in some places. In others, they have an outside facilitator, facilitator come in and work with a lot of teachers at one time and then they work on developing those units. But it's getting that conversation started and thinking about um, broadening the perspective piece and helping weave those pieces back in. Training helps staff look critically at the curriculum and begin to develop those six themes. And again, that's over time. It is not a, it's all expected to be done by the end of one year or the next. Um, it can take several years. It can take more than a couple of years. It just, it's the pace with which is comfortable for the building to go. The application process, um, I need to explain too, is by building. It is not the district applies for everybody all at once. It's an individual application, and while components would be similar because the themes and things could carry from building to building, while the general theme would be the same, they would then be taken and tweaked depending upon what's going on at your building level and the resources that you have and what you would like to do. So there's some individuality with that, and that's what the IB group would like to see with the primary years program, that that's reflected as such, which is really the importance also of having a facilitator help with that, um, with that application piece. This end slide is a, really a philosophy statement, but it, I think it echoes sort of our, our mission as the Midland Public Schools and just having <coughs> students actively engaged in their learning with opportunities to connect their learning beyond the classroom. And the focus, relevance, and increased engagement really helps all students continue to connect and extend their learning in all areas within this program. And so that would be the goal if we choose to move forward. Thank you. Do you have any questions yeah. for Mrs. Uh, any questions for Dr. Clipsit or Luann? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, hands go up. Uh, John, I, I, I have two, if I may. Uh. Um, the when we visited Dow High uh, just last week, we talked to Ms. Pankos about how the program could grow. What would be what would spur development of that? Um, she had indicated that that maybe students are finding out the end of middle middle school, beginning of high school about the IB program, mm -hmm. and that this would actually help promote the growth, the understanding, the learner profile, start all that a lot earlier. And that is actually part of a natural evolution of starting out with an IB program. We're at about a five-year point. Right. So you start out the high school, and then you can build. That's what most schools and programs do, is build that into, you know, across K through five, if I understand that, or K through uh, 12, rather. That's true. That's, that is what, what many do. Um, they are standalone programs. You can have IB, and we have for several years by itself at the, at the high school level. PYP can stand alone, as can the middle years program. But yeah, those foundational elements are the same, and that's that thread that helps um, tie it all together. And I think as a district, that's an exciting kind of piece to pursue. And, and if you had some more involvement at the younger year level, it could grow in the later years, and then potentially the middle school piece can come in. Sure. Um, so I can see that, that that can be an essential part of the evolution of having mm -hmm. IB here for MPS. Uh, the other thing is is that when you work with the focus group, um, and I'm just thinking of the book that we looked at, Schools Can't Do It Alone, and that's kind of when I look at these major change proposals, I'm kind of looking at what that conversation is with the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are schools doing different? You know, how are we going to move along with, uh, you know, global thinking, technology, and so forth? Did any of those elements come up working with 
of this focus group uh, as parents, you know, with young kids that who knows how they're going to compete in the global economy and so forth. Was anything coming up with 21st century learning? Or what you hear? And I think that that is <coughs> the topic of conversation that everybody's hearing right now because those are the words that, that we talk about at so many of our different experiences, the common core that's coming up, the 21st century learning. People wanting their children to be ready for problem solving, you know, hearing that what they learn now won't be what they're learning in, in five more years and they have to build those skills on how to ask questions and how to kind of direct their own learning, just how the job change is going to be. At the elementary level, is that a concern for parents? Uh, maybe not as, as much as it is when they get to middle and high school and really start thinking about those things, but it really depends upon where your kids are along the road to learn and if you have those older kids and start thinking about what we can do. The initial um, question with this particular program was, you know, how will that benefit them and what's that going to mean for my child? And really it's that interaction piece and being able to appreciate people with differences and, and different perspectives and having more dialogue and more collaboration. And that's a, a skill that has been discussed at I think every level of education within our realm. I know at our meetings we've talked about it, that that's an important thing that our businesses and the community look at and how to start building that at an early level. So that was, a, that was a positive, a very a, a big positive. A unanimous type of excitement about doing new things and along these lines, so that's, that's exciting. Yeah, I think Engage our community and, and get them uh, excited about that. So that's great. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, I wanted, to, uh, from the financial piece, the money that's in here, is that every year that you would need that much or what, how does that fit in? Well, I know that um, Dr. Ellison has the, the whole schematic of what that would look long term okay. and, and has that available to share. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, the, the, during the years of candidacy, the first four years, which is how long it would take to get, if we were able to follow our kind of two-step recommendation of three, year, three buildings and four buildings, um, it would probably take us about uh, totally for the candidacy fees and for the application piece, about $425,000 across those years for candidacy. Then, of course, you're finished with the training and you're finished with the candidacy fees, and it, it comes down to around maybe between 30, 40, 50,000, depending what you choose to do. That would not include a coordinator, though, so that would be in addition to that. But after you get through that implementation, like we did with the di diploma program, um, that's our most expensive time in getting uh, trained. We do have another opportunity in the training because we are continuing to look for less expensive options. Um, sending people to Cincinnati is not like flying them to, to California, for sure. But we also have a new opportunity since Michigan is now having enough schools that we have been designated as a state where we can do our own training. And we have been contacted by Saginaw Public, which has PYP, and they're doing the whole program. Uh, Saginaw Public and the township also are doing that, and their coordinator has contacted us and asked whether we could work together and become one training site. That would bring our costs way down. So we're in the process of looking at that. That's just something new that's come available to us in the past few months. So we would certainly continue to look at that. And as I think the ladies described, people do it differently. Uh, some people train maybe one or two people and then they come back and train. We would prefer to have more than that trained if possible, but certainly there's a lot of flexibility in that as well. There's some significant dollars when you look over a four or five year period that are associated with it, Angela. Um, and before we'd asked the board to formally adopt this so we could get moving down the path and looking at PYP, we thought it would be good to plant a seed with all of you to say, do you, do you value what you see in the diploma program at the high schools enough to say, you know what, this is a good place for us to go as a district? We do, administratively, and with the support of a committee and the leadership that, you know, Dr. Lippett, Dr. Lipset and, and Luann Benzer, Benzinger brings to this. We also know that there's some interest from other um, parties in the community in seeing us expand that. And we will pursue all of that. And I think before we'd ask the board to take action, we'd be able to share with you where that kind of assistance would come from. Um, I just want to share one observation I had from also being with the uh, CAS committee in Sarah Pankow's classroom because I've taken a couple of emails from staff members um, with a general communication that we sent out last week about new tech and our upcoming survey we're going to talk about later in the meeting as well as 
expanding the IB program. And that is, th there is still a little bit, I think, of a misnomer in terms of people perceive the IB program as the, a program that's only for those students that learn quick and are our brightest students. And interestingly enough, we were in this class and almost one third of the students that were in this class were special needs students. And I don't think for any of us that were in the room seeing how engaged these youngsters were. And I think these were seniors, if I, if I recall right. I don't think they were juniors that were in the class. You could not distinguish the ability level of these kids in this discussion. And you know what? Part of that is because very early on when youngsters start taking the IB classes, they're trained to how to conduct classroom discussions. So we would see the teacher, someone would ask a question and the teacher would say, good question, that is a knowledge question, and point that out to students. And then she would ask kids to um, create a take question to that. And how powerful would that be to uh, take care of our, even our youngsters at an elementary level that need more time to learn, that need the reassurance that they don't have to hide their hesitancy to participate in a discussion because there's a format that can be carried on that takes care of the needs of all the kids. It's just not for those kids that are, are what we call brightest. I hate that term because I think all kids learn at different speeds. I mean, we know that learning is not necessarily linear. Youngsters learn at different paces and so on, but um, done correctly, they can all learn what it is that we have to offer them. So there's some real power in developing and focusing on that learner profile and bring it along at a lower level, let that get up to the middle school uh, and see where that carries the whole district. So when we bring this to you, we'll be asking for conceptual uh, approval. We know it's contingent upon budgeting. Just a couple of comments. Um, one, Carl stole my thunder on the uh, participants in that classroom. Uh, it, w it was very unique and uh, really uh, caught me off guard when we had the conference room discussion afterwards as to the participants in the classroom and the fact that they chose to be in this class and that they were all engaged and very much so uh, throughout the course of the um, discussion, at least while we were in the room. Uh, so it was, um, that was very enlightening. And two, uh, you know, I think you, you, you hit on a point earlier uh, what PYP uh, really will do for the community and it's uh, pulling the community in. And I think that this is a community that uh, obviously likes to be invo involved and engaged with their, with their children for the most part um, uh, in their educational experience, uh, whether it be mi elementary, middle school, or high school. Uh, you see it across the board. And I think that that's got to be exciting for you to think that what the potential could be, especially at the elementary level, pulling parents even in further than they've been in the past with respect to this new possibility. So I'm excited about that. And I just have one question. Uh, you said um, there will be staff going to training in December. Uh, I just want to know what kind of feedback you got. I mean, obviously you've selected some or they're in the process of being selected. Uh, uh, is uh, some feedback that you may have received from them as far as um, going to the training? Well, I think every, the request was for to have one representative from each, at least one representative from each elementary school based upon the funding from the proposal that we came forward with last year with the staff development piece. And it was not hard, you know, within a day I had people okay. wanting to go and asking to go to more. So it's just that um, it's the funding piece, quite honestly, for, for getting it there. But we have it for now and learning those pieces because I think no matter what, you know, whether this is an opportunity that we're able to move forward with right now or not, this is a great opportunity for people to learn more about it and, and be able to start thinking about that and doing it in their classroom and those questioning techniques and trying to look at their curriculum in a broader perspective. And I think that's um, good for everyone. An interesting piece of information might I might add is that the the conference actually was closed. It was full at Cincinnati. We couldn't get in. Uh, this was several months ago and it isn't happening until December. But uh, we have some very persistent folks on our, on our, that work with us. And so they called down and actually said, OK, if we can have 13 people, will you open a new section for us for PYP introduction? And they said yes. But it does show you that there is a great deal of interest. And these conferences fill up almost immediately. So you have to be watching online. And then you need to get your folks in and get registered immediately. But fortunately, we were able to do that and um, have our section. Good. Very good. Yes, Jerry. Yeah, a couple of questions. One's almost like Ken's. Um, what was the degree of excitement 
uh, on the staff on the committee, and were there any unique concerns between staff on the committee that were from different buildings? I would say the staff on the committee um, shows great enthusiasm, to say the least. Okay. Um, we have some of the staff, obviously, who serve on the committee who will not be able to go to Cincinnati, and they are waiting on literally a waiting list that if some reason somebody has to back out, they're ready to go. <laughs> so there's great enthusiasm. Our plan is in November at our professional development meeting that um, those teachers on the committee are going to meet at the building level with all of the teachers within the elementary to give them more information about the primary years program. So they will be getting additional information um, in another week um, to answer many of the questions that they probably are, have now since um, Mr. Ellinger sent out the email talking about it. And any unique concerns? Building A versus Building B, uh, or is it pretty much all common themes? No buildings have been named at this point. No, no. With your teachers from specific buildings. Oh, yes. Was there no. any concerns that we're unique because uh, it, it was a pretty much common themes across most? Buildings? No, I think I think one of the first things was, well, how are you going to choose which building? <laughs> okay. You know, that was the big thing at the beginning. First, it was the the what. Um, what Mr. Ellinger had spoken of as far as the perception that it was only for, you know, for the gifted kids and it was a separate program. And so once that was laid to the side, then people looked at it more critically and thought, oh, wow, you know, it's great for everyone. Well, then how do you decide which building would it would be in? And then it was, well, you know, really it should be in all buildings because it, everybody wanted their child and teacher wanted that, for that piece wanted to do it. And then it was, okay, well, maybe we'll do three and four. Well, how are you going to pick the three? You know, it's just that, that piece of how do you choose and how is it? going to be uh, okay. done. Good. But I think that it was the feeling that it didn't matter what kind of things are already going on, going on in the school. It's that opportunity to, to take that school and bridge it further out into the community. And that's wonderful in any of Great. the buildings. So that was really the... Do you, and I think each Excellent. building um, and their representatives, and we have more administrators on board now too, each saw it as fitting their, their need within their building, say their building culture that it was a program that would fit regardless of which building you are in. Perfect. And that was, yeah. That's what I was, looking that was for. right yeah. out front. That's exactly with that. what I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah. Gary, I, I would just add that if it works, <coughs> I don't know for sure that it has this in common with a high school program, but when you go to that, um, that graduation of the Diploma Candidate Ceremony over at the Historical Center, you see a pretty wide variety of the kinds of um, Senior thesis, or uh, what, what are, I forget the terminology yeah, they yeah. use. Essay. Yes, their extended essay that they take like two years to work on. <coughs> and and when, when you read the topics of that, for some of our families here in the community, they would interpret that to be a college research paper. And some youngsters will go into that kind of depth. I mean, it will just um, blow people away when they see how scholarly those papers are. Not everybody does that. So I think there's the potential here to accommodate learners and our students based on where they are. And if there's a parallel to that on how you implement this at the elementary, I think for our parents of our, our uh, fastest learning students, they'll see potential in this to latch onto it because it could create something we don't have in the elementaries right now. Um, but we can reassure parents um, whose youngsters need more time that it will also satisfy them. And I think we have yet to convince some of our own staff of that the, the the range is that broad. Any other questions or comments? Lynn. Just thank you, Luann and, <clears throat> and Linda. I think it was nice that you can present this in a way that people can understand and get a lot of questions answered. But having, um, having been exposed to it at our home, just at the high school level, to see, see the difference in, in um, what Sarah was learning and how she was learning in a couple of her classes and what we've heard Sarah Pankost and some of the teachers that I've talked to over these last several years find it really exciting. I can see where you're saying that the younger um, in the, in the uh, elementary buildings that the teachers are excited because not only are those teachers that are trained, you know, it, it kind of filters out into the, the, the other teacher classrooms right. and, and just that uh, atmosphere in the building. And whether you do or you do not at the high school, it's still there. You, you, it just kind of filters in. And, 
And so I find it really exciting and to meet so many students' needs and you know, we've changed over the years from I go way back to when I don't even remember what the advanced and accelerated, <laughs> but it was called GP I think and 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 of course that was for one group of needs and y this way it, it just meets everybody at wherever they're at and kind of like what Carl alluded to and we saw in Sarah's class how exciting that everybody can hopefully feel comfortable at the pace they're learning and feel good about the learning and set that bar really high so thank you I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes any other comments or questions Thank you again. A very interesting and a very well uh, thought out pro process. Thank you. Okay, moving on to Mr. Oley and an FFO committee report. Uh, we met last week in what I think might have been the shortest meeting of the year. It only was a little bit over an hour and a half, actually. Um, we reviewed the September financial reports, which we'll uh, get to here. To, in, or we, I guess we dealt with it in the consent agenda. Um, Mrs. Klein reported on um, several facilities issues. Uh, the first one was the donation of Longview to the Midland County Educational Service Area, and that should be completed soon. And the MCESA plans to convert the building to an early childhood center. Both the Northeast and Northwest Little Leagues have approached the district about improving the baseball field at Northeast Middle School. And then we talked about the renewal for property and casualty insurance, which we thought might be on the agenda for tonight, but that will be on the agenda for a future board meeting. Um, Mrs. Klein said she'd been contacted um, by um, Kathy Peretz, the MPS lead music teacher, about the High School Music Boosters' interest in proceeding with the um, 1011 Music Subcommittee recommendation to conduct another tuning up type of fundraiser for uniforms. And representatives of that group will be invited to present their concept at a future board meeting so all of us can hear about it. Mr. Ellinger and Mrs. Klein met with representatives from Energy Education an energy conservation and management company that promises to help us reduce our energy consumption by up to 30%, which certainly got our attention. With nearly two million in an annual energy expenditures, it's a very attractive proposition, and we plan to ask our attorney to review the energy education's contract before proceeding. Mr. Verlindi distributed a draft of the user agreement that students and their parents will sign in order to participate in the iPad pilot. In order to take the iPads home, parents must agree that they will pay 100% of the cost if the unit is lost or stolen, um, but the first claim for damage unit will be covered by MPS. The second claim will result in a $25 charge, and subsequent claims must be paid at 100%. Anecdotal experience from other districts indicates that damage claims will be minimal. I think the committee was very supportive of this approach. And now that the sinking fund is concluded, the district is going to solicit requests for proposals for audit services. Mrs. Klein is preparing an RFP that she will send to auditors for fine services to larger districts that levy a hold harmless millage like we, in addition to the regular operational millage and our current auditor will be included in the list of possible bidders. Mrs. Klein recommended that the, to the group that the current budget includes money for bus replacements. The Michigan School Business Officials has a purchasing program that runs from October 1 through January 31. We used it last year and felt that it was a very efficient and cost-effective way to solicit bids, and so we will use it again this year. And then that group engaged in a very lively discussion about how the information available in the My School data might be used for marketing purposes, and more to come on that in future meetings for this group. That was it. Our next meeting is November 20th, and I'm sure there must be copies of these minutes outside for everybody to t get a copy of. So, good meeting. Thanks, Rick. Any questions of Rick uh, with respect to the meeting or the minutes? If not, Mrs. Klein. All right. And I just had an email today from Mrs. Peretz reporting that both of the booster groups have agreed to support a tuning up type good. fundraiser. So we will move ahead with bringing them to talk to the larger board. Uh, we have a number of gifts this evening. They total $5,866.09, and they include the Dow High School Music Parents, Seabird Elementary PTO, the Midland High School Athletic Booster Club, an anonymous donor providing support for classroom supplies at Seabird, uh, the Dow High School Athletic Booster Club, Midland Shock, providing support for a volleyball pitching machine for Northeast's Viking volleyball team. Uh, Dow Chemical Community Gives Fund, and I'll talk more about that in just a second. And then the East Lawn Elementary Student Supplemental Education Endowment Fund at the Midland Area Community Foundation. This is a fund that was originally set up by a group of very dedicated science volunteers at Longview. And when Longview consolidated into East Lawn, 
they work to have the fund renamed and repurposed somewhat, and so it provides support for science activities at Islan. In this case, it allowed for a teacher to go to the American Wilderness Leadership School this summer, and then she's bringing back what she learned and is using it with her students. Now let me back up just a second to the Dow Chemical Community Gives Fund, also at the Midland Area Community Foundation, because <coughs> I realize we've approved a couple of these, and I haven't really talked to you about what they mean, and it's a very different type of grant from what we typically see in that in order to qualify for it, the grantee has to make a promise of some sort of community service. So this isn't just a case of money being given to a group. It's being given in exchange for that group giving what it has, which is its own time and expertise, to someone else. And this is, was set up uh, by the Dow Chemical Corporation through a fund at the Community Foundation. And in this particular case, it was a $1,000 grant to the tennis program. Terry Schwarzkopf, the boys varsity tennis coach, applied for it. And their giving forward to the community, the purpose of the grant was to help purchase uniforms for the team. But what they agreed to do is to offer free tennis clinics to students in grades K through 8. And they used King's Courts in Midland, and they used uh, some of their own personal donated equipment and also were able to work with the tennis center for uh, equipment. And when I contacted Terry to let him know that the money had arrived and wanted to make sure that the, it really had gone for what I thought it was, uh, he said that on average they had about 20 students per week attend. They had 100% participation from all the members of the varsity tennis team. So they worked hard uh, giving what they were able to give in terms of providing <coughs> the support for the younger students. And they viewed it as perhaps building some interest in their program somewhere along the way. But in exchange, the Dow Chemical Community Gives Grant supported them with their effort to, in essence, earn their uniforms. And we have a number of our staff members that have applied for this and probably will see some, a few others. And my plea to them as they applied was to provide me with the information because I thought you'd be interested in knowing what it is that our students are giving back. Sometimes we just talk about what the community is giving to us. But this is a case where there was uh, a little bit of everybody giving where they were able to. So that was a $1,000 grant uh, that was part of that total of 5000 almost $6,000. Thank you. Comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to Mr. Wasserman with a report. HR report. We met uh, Tuesday, October 16th on the heels of the FFO meeting. Um, we took up three subjects. We had a MCA grievance and update. Uh, uh, without going into detail, we reviewed the grievance and advanced to the Board of Education level at that meeting. Um, there's going to be, in terms of manager changes, Mr. Valindi recommended a category change for a manager's position going forward in the future. And personnel status, Mr. Valindi informed the committee of a potential employment issue we may be facing down the road. We will next meet on December 6th at 4 p.m. here. Thank you. Mr. Valindi, anything to add to that? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, Seven is course or seven point one is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. You see the three remaining uh, board meetings for the 2012 uh, calendar year, and uh, that moves us to study discussion. And I'll start to my right with Dr. Kaminsky. Uh, just uh, really two things here. Thanks to the the donors, so we have nine donations uh, to the middle public schools. Uh, it's always impressive to have the community support, and it is really unique to have those gifts of those students and everybody chipping in with their time. So that's really fabulous to see. And I see a lot of booster clubs, PTOs, a lot of parents uh, doing work also with their time um, to, um, uh, to, to keep and meet all the needs. Um, the other thing is, is, that, uh, is that when I was looking at the major change proposals, I was thinking in terms of uh, you know, looking down the road, uh, looking at the budgetary process and so forth. I think it is important to bring to the community uh, what we can do and what the potential possibilities can be, kind of what we believe in our philosophy and direction that we can go with the curriculum, how we can innovate and so forth, um, and, and see how the community responds to that. I know there's a lot of uh, you know surveying that we're going to do. Um, we certainly want to get feedback. We want to engage the public. And I'm thinking in terms of, number one, 
our uh, vision statement that was developed uh, three or four years ago by the community. A lot of those elements are, are in, can be met with the major change proposals that we're coming up with um, in, in following. And then the other thing is, is of course, the, the, the book that we talked about, schools can't do it alone. I sense the need in the public to engage people to, at the elementary level, for example, with the PYP program, uh, potentially to have that excitement to kind of put some new energy out there and so forth. Um, with the changes in, in the economy, where education needs to go, our skill sets, and uh, going forward, I think people definitely would respond to having some something different to offer our, our community. So I'm excited to see where that goes. But yeah, just, just want to thank Linda and, and Luann. I, this is, I'm thinking here, and maybe this is just kind of the period of time I'm, I'm in right now, a lot of flashbacks to over the years uh, where we've made enhancements to the curriculum, specifically in the elementary school, and it's kind of refreshing to spend a lot of time talking about enhancing things in the curriculum and not just solely talking about budget issues and reductions and where do we do, you know, get more with less and that kind of thing. And thinking back to things like the focus program, which I'm sure some people remember here, and uh, elementary foreign language and those kind of things. It's just really refreshing to be able to hear this. And I know that we still have a budget challenge on how we're going to pay for it, but it's um, really good stuff long term for sustainability of our excellence in the Newton Public Schools. The only thing I just want to comment is I just I know there was a lot of individual and team accomplishments and success in fall sports, but I just got to do a shout out to, to two teams. Uh, one uh, Midland High football team who went undefeated. It's no easy feat. Um, and then even more so, the, the Dow High tennis team. Um, my gosh, um, I think we talked about this last year after three consecutive state championships, and now it's four. And I have no idea what the data shows, but there can't be too many teams in any sport in any school in the state of Michigan that have won four state championships in a row. Um, so just shout out to them. They obviously have a lot of things going for them. I don't want to use the word dynasty, but they're doing <laughs> outstanding things in the state. And, and the whole community does a wonderful job with tennis, obviously, but that's no easy feat. And uh, thinking about those seniors on that team um, that have a state championship every year, that is absolutely phenomenal. And obviously a lot to be said for that coaching staff and for the parents and, and the whole community, because uh, tennis is really a community-wide effort here. But, uh, just want to congratulate them. Uh, I think um, we need to kind of honor them in some way, shape, or form because that's pretty uh, phenomenal kind of thing. So that's all I have. Well, I want to thank the ladies too, Dr. Lipset and Luann Bensinger, for being here tonight and your, for your excellent presentation. I found it very informative and very exciting. So thank you very much for that. Also, um, in terms of shout outs, the focus, I have ample opportunity to see the focus. My daughter always brings one home. I bought a subscription and I get one here. So I get a lot of exposure to it. I, I think this is like just top quality newspaper. I am so impressed with it. So I uh, you know, really commend the staff and uh, Mr. Worley, of course. I think it's a great newspaper. I really look forward to getting my three copies of it each time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All the notes that I jotted down, everybody has said. So um, I, I was going to comment on the, on the journalism classes as well with the update and the focus here. It is always a wealth of information. I usually find out more what's going on in the schools by reading those than I even did for my own, my own students when they were there. So thank you and keep sending those along. Um, good luck to the high school, Midland Highs football team. I actually had to sit through that whole rainy night the other night, but it was Great. worth it to the end. And um, my, my, da my daughter, Laura, uh, I was talking to her, she had called and she said they were the last year that they went 9-0. and all. And she says, remember, Mom, it was pouring rain and it was double overtime. So mm -hmm. I said, remember thank that. goodness we didn't mm -hmm. have double overtime. So I wish them well as they play Marquette on Saturday and um, it's very exciting for the, the whole community. And um, same to the tennis team. I saw that tonight before I came and, and that is an incredible accomplishment. And, uh, and then to piggyback on what Linda said and how they gave back this summer and sharing their excitement and, and uh, paying it forward. That, that just says even more for the, the quality and the integrity of that, that team. So, And Linda and Luann, hopefully we'll, we'll see you more with more presentations as we hopefully can move forward with this in the next, next couple of years. So thank you. Sure. Um, echoing many of the comments already, I'm really excited about the proposals for change, not just those proposals, but the fact that that we are advancing the cause of education in this community. You know, you look at you look at this PYP, and thanks, ladies, great job again. Um, you look at the potential for new tech. You look at the iPad um, uh, pilot and possible full implementation, and you look at those things as items that are 
are driving us to new ways, new approaches to educating our kids and for our teachers to, to instruct our kids. Everybody's going to change. The kids are going to get changed. The staff's going to change. Um, and, it's, and it's change without, um, hopefully, not violent change, meaning, meaning absorbable change and transitory change that people can absorb and do and be enthused about uh, versus dreading and uh, thinking bad things will happen. It's all positive. And it will, will be wonderful for our kids as we go forward. So I'll, I'll be driven to uh, hook, crook, some way, find financing that we can start implementing some of these things because uh, we need to move forward with how we educate our kids. Rick, when I hate to say this, I may be getting as tenured, not, not as tenured as you, but close, because I started board and involvement with the schools with the FOCUS program when it first came out. And Lou Ann will nod her head, and Kathy will nod her head. And uh, it's interesting now we're moving into a new wave of how to educate our, our youngest students. And that's critically important because that foundation will carry through the next seven years and well beyond, but at least in their tenure with us for the next six to seven years after that. So I'm excited and thank you ladies and, uh, and uh, hope we will, I'll, I'll be one board where driven to find a way to make things happen. Angela. All right, a couple of things. First, congratulations to all the sports teams. I only made it through half the game Friday night. But it was it's wonderful to go to those Midland Dow games because, you know, the bands play together, the cheerleaders play together, the drum lines play together, and, well, I guess the teams play against each other. But, <laughs> <laughs> but still. And the bands were phenomenal playing together. Oh, it was really great. No, it was really great. But they played. I, it was really you know, great. looked at the radar, and I said, the rate's not going to stop, and I don't have a child out on the field in Middle League. Um, <coughs> anyway, another thing, last Wednesday, I, had that, I think it was Wednesday night, I had the opportunity to go to a Dow Parent Link meeting, my first one, since I had my first child in high school, and um, it was wonderful. It was a great um, opportunity. Randy Shada came and talked to parents about new tech, and I really encourage parents to look into it and find out things about it so that they can have discussions with board members, with teachers, with administrators, because I would love to get feedback from the community on their thoughts on it and concerns and what they think are you know good things. and concerns that they would have. And then we also um, heard a presentation about a mentoring program that they have going on at Dow High, which I thought was phenomenal. They have the um, you know, group of students who are um, mentoring younger students after school a couple times a week, and that was very interesting to hear about that. That's it. As usual, the last part is the hardest part. Um, but I. Uh, I mentioned this in an earlier board meeting, and I think it uh, still holds true. And I think that uh, this year, and I know we're well into the beginning of the of this school year, but uh, we talked about the excitement in the district. And uh, when you look at PYP and you look at uh, New Tech, and uh, sitting in that classroom the other day, uh, uh, theory of knowledge, uh, it gives you uh, the kind of feeling you hope you would have uh, on a continuous basis if once you're a board member. Uh, because it's uh, uh, it's extremely exciting, and in, uh, um, I started off on the CAS uh, committee when I was first on the board, and uh, sat on it for several years, and now I know why I miss it, um, because it uh, really is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, with respect to delivering the curriculum and the, and what we do for students in all of our classrooms, and uh, I think. Um, we touched on it earlier about the involvement of the students in that classroom, and that probably struck home to me and really uh, was a warm, fuzzy moment for me uh, because um, that speaks volumes when we have children with special needs in a TOK classroom and there was no difference uh, in the discussion. You couldn't have, I, you could have asked any one of us to, uh, you know, s say, hey, you know what, we know what, we know what students were, those students, because it didn't happen. They were engaged. Uh, Sarah does an awesome job, and hats off and kudos to her and how she conducts her class and and how she brings that out of them. And that was that was a, a special moment. Uh, I'll really uh, I'll remember that for a long time. Um, what I think that in addition to that, I think what um, uh, we have going in this district um, uh, lends itself to what Dr. Kaminsky touched on, and that's uh, our vision, the mission statement. Um, and what we're, how we're moving forward, um, and Rick's uh, his, his historical perspective with respect to focus and things that we've done in the past. Um, now it's a different time and a different uh, uh, opportunity, but uh, yet uh, another great opportunity for this district to do great things for our students. And so, very much excited. Uh, kudos to all of our uh, sports teams. 
Um, and um, I think it was mentioned that we should be doing some special recognition with respect to the tennis team uh, from Dow High. Uh, that's an, uh, no easy feat, as well as being 9-0 at, 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 at Midland High's uh, football team. But uh, we'll see how that works out in the future for uh, the administration and time. Uh, they all have busy, uh, busy uh, schedules and, and full plates. So um, you have a list of events to be involved with and invited to this evening uh, at your place. So please try to involve yourself, as I know that we oftentimes uh, catch ourselves coming and going. But uh, please take an opportunity to visit our buildings and uh, show both staff, students, teachers uh, that we are uh, not just sitting up here and uh, aren't just talking heads, that uh, we actually enjoy what we, we do up here. So with that, I'll give it to Mr. Ellinger. Can, yes. Uh, can I make one other comment sure. that I forgot? Um, I'd like to wish luck to all the board candidates. I think the last meeting before the election. Good point. And um, and uh, and thank you for lending your time to the community, regardless of the result. Uh, one of you will not be here. Uh, two of you will, and uh, just appreciate the willingness to step up and uh, serve our kids. And uh, in doing that, I I hope you're also eager and ready to be educated and trained like our kids to learn what board service means after we get started. And uh, what that means to serve the community, it, it's a different perspective once you sit at the table uh, than before that. So I'm looking eager for the new board members, and uh, good luck to you on Tuesday, or two Tuesdays from now. There you go, Mr. Ellinger. Uh, three major items. Um, I have, <laughs> I think, 24 or 25 minutes before the Bears and the Lions kick off here, Mr. Ollie. <laughs> I don't think so it's quite the finale. I, I will. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> I will get started. I'm not even going to refer to your historical uh, importance here. So, a uh, couple of items. One, uh, we did have a discussion with the FFO uh, study committee, I think it was last Tuesday, and uh, we have an opportunity to partner with a community organization here, which really is a business school partnership. And that has to do with the Midland Tomorrow organization uh, for some marketing services on behalf of the district. And there's a great opportunity because they're getting ready to hire a marketing position. We can use some of our purchase services um, dollars that we have budgeted. Um, but we talked to the FFO about that amount may go above and beyond what we budgeted because all we'd have to do is get um, three students choose to attend, three or four, and it would more than offset the cost of doing that. So as I go through the survey that's going to hit our community this week, you're going to see one of the questions we ask of our community is how do you prefer that we communicate with all of you? And we suspect for some age level, for lack of a better word, say 40 or below, that social media may be a place that a lot of them look to see more communication from Midland Public Schools and that space. And if that's true, we have some plans on how we can address that, which we're really excited about. So I wanted to give you a heads up about that. I refer to the survey, and you know this is really a fun time for the district because at least for the temporary time we can put some labor issues that we've been dealing with for the last two years off to the side. Um, we still have a budget where we um, spend more than we bring in on an annual basis so we have to be very careful with what expenditures we create new or otherwise or ho however we might offset that. But a number of us meaning the Three of the four that sit over at this table and myself have been involved in some very strategic discussions with a number of organizations here in Midland, from the corporations to the foundations to educational entities that, um, such as MyTech, where we've been strategizing for some time, once we can put our labor issues behind us, even if just temporarily, what can we do to communicate, to engage our community, to move programming forward? and have all those entities that I just mentioned on the same page. And I think we have an opportunity to do that, quite frankly, between now and Christmas. And so uh, we have worked with the board in study committees, and we've talked about, and we have engaged the services of a company out of Lansing called Cobalt, Communi Co Cobalt Community Research. And they're a communications group. Um, the board, I think, years ago, um, perhaps one of you at this table would remember this, uh, hired a firm out of Lansing to survey the community to see about a bonding project and sinking fund and so on. So I want to share with you, um, we don't have a final version of the survey. It'll be finished up here in the next 24 hours. Uh, it is meant to be mailed out 
to 1,500 of our uh, uh, registered voters from the qualified voter list. There will be an opportunity for every single parent here that we have an email address for, and that is by far almost all our parents, to directly um, appeal to that group to complete the survey. And we hope to have that data back that we can share it with the board um, in some form, probably not the printed, clean, summarized executive summary that you typically would get by the second meeting in November. And if we do, and we look at how we might fund some of these new initiatives, and if we have anything we can share at that point in time, you may be in a, in a position um, 30 days from now to make some decisions about moving the PYP program or a new tech program um, forward. Um, I've used this phrase with, phrase with the board of let's not be afraid, let's be astute to take some deliberate measurable risk um, when it comes to the operations of the entire district. And um, that means keeping programming progressive and moving forward. It means uh, being astute about the budget but not being afraid to fund some things that keep us to be the appealing district of excellence, frankly, in the area. Um, that I think we all want to be and continue that tradition. And I think you'll have some data from the survey, um, especially after I review the major categories with you here in a few minutes, to put you in a position to know how your community feels about all of this. So the, the survey is actually a six-page survey. It's divided into, I think, 20 different um, sections. I'm not going to review the detail of it because it's not quite complete yet, but I'm going to give you some general impressions of it. And the first one is to ask our community our parents, to rate our impressions of Midland Public Schools on a Likert scale of strongly disagree or you strongly uh, really like it. Do they feel connected as a partner of their child's education? Are we well managed when it comes to the finances of the district? Are administrators trustworthy? Are our employees well trained? And you can imagine some questions that would get asked in that area. Then we would move to a section where we ask our community to rate us on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being poor and 10 being excellent. And we asked them about eight or ten different areas in the area of curriculum. Are we offering the kind of curriculum that um, they're happy with and that they think we should? Uh, we asked them to rate other services from transportation to before and after school program to our athletic programs, um, academic support, et cetera. We asked them to give us ratings so they know how they feel about our teaching staff. And we did the same thing about, their, uh, about principals. We asked them to think about our facilities, uh, safety and security at MPS how we communicate with, the timeliness of communication, the frequency, the ease with which they um, um, uh, communicate with us, the relevance of what gets communicated to them. We ask them for feedback on our website, and then we ask them to uh, think about their most recent contact with the district and to characterize that of reaching the appropriate person, the response to their question if they ask one, the completeness of response, really about customer service, so if you think about that particular question. Uh, we ask um, with whom was their most recent contact, and then virtually all our employee groups, including you as board members, um, are listed there. We ask, uh, we indicate the likelihood that uh, we ask them that would they take the following actions based on a scale of not likely at all to very likely, participating in conferences, speaking favorably about schools, Volunteering time for local school needs, participation with parent support organizations, and school system planning. Uh, would they intend to keep their children in the school system next year? And would they be willing to pay more taxes to fund school enhancements? Because you need some information about that. Uh, we asked them how they prefer to receive their information, anywhere from district website to notes home to phone calls to Facebook or other social media tools. We ask them what topics are, are important to them, and we list about 12 or 14. Things as diverse as academic progress, district spending, operational performance, security, volunteer opportunities, athletics, technology, district planning, changes in services and programs, how they can reinforce lessons outside the classroom, district and community partnerships, how do we compare with other schools, and do they feel we have their children career and college ready. Then we ask them to, uh, to really, based on their experience to date with Midland Public Schools, are they very dissatisfied with us or are they very satisfied? We ask them to imagine an ideal local public school system and how well do they think Midland Public Schools compares to that ideal local school system, not very close or very close to the ideal. We ask them for what they think are their, the two best attributes of our school system here in Midland. 
what are the two most important improvements that we need in Midland schools? And then question number 18 lists close to 18 different items. Maybe it's 14, I'm not sure, that gives them the ability to focus on those areas that they think have the most value to the community. Things like STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, robotics, international education standards, again, athletics, fine and performing arts, college and career readiness, workforce ready and vocational skills and trades, enhanced technology for instruction, G and T programs, advanced and accelerated, career development, student business collaborations, online learning, non-traditional school calendar, reversing the schedule. You know what, we start high school students early, elementary students later. If that's a priority for them, they have an opportunity to check that as well. Renewable energy programs and longer school days. Then we get to question 19 and we talk about millage options because uh, we all know that we have a number of millages that are coming due in the next three years from our hold harmless and operating millage to the enhancement millage is running out, no decisions made about what we go after that. Is there a need to go after a special education millage in the county? When you look at those growing expenses, we need to have some feedback and some discussion with all the boards uh, locally about that, as well as millages to um, take another sinking fund request to the board or even a bond for technology. And so in the area of millages, we ask four questions. We say continuing maintenance and repairs, which would include repairing roofs, parking lots, heating and ventilation, floors and plumbing, window replacement, improve energy efficiency. And then we say at an estimated cost of 1.27 mills, which is $5.29 per month for a home with a market value of $100,000, would they support, oppose, or do they need more information before they can make up their mind? We asked them about a question about expanding the pool at Dow um, High School by two lanes to allow the district to sponsor state and regional competition. Linda Klein has been representing the district on a uh, community group involving the community center, all interested partners in swimming. They have done an assessment of the pool needs across the whole community. We realized that out of that assessment, we knew what prior to the assessment that our two middle school pools are really not in very good condition. And we may be in a position of finding it very difficult to even continue those operations in the future. So how, mon how many lanes do we need to accommodate swimming in the pool? And what are the advantages if you expand that Dow um, uh, pool by a couple of lanes? We asked them to consider that at a cost of 0.2 mills, which would be 83 cents per month for a home with a market value of $100,000. We ask about renovating a building, most likely Central Middle School, to support future focused educational programs such as a new tech program. Estimated cost, 0.23 mills, 96 cents per month for a home with a market value of $100,000. Again, could they support, would they oppose, or do they need more information? Then we talk about updating the high school science lab. I don't know how many people in our community really realize this. But when you look at the two high schools, they were actually constructed in 1955 and 1967. And we asked them how they feel about renovating those as well as music and art facilities at an estimated cost of 0.3 mills, which is $1.25 per month for a home with a market value of 100000 Then we talk about bond options, a bond being a type of borrowing used to pay startup costs of specific projects, pay back over time with interest, with current economic conditions, Bar bond rates are um, at near historic lows. So this is a time if we were gonna float a bond with our community support that really is idealistic to do it. So we ask um, when we look at our technology needs, expanding the iPad project and looking at what other needs we have for technology that is very student focused so we can really say with a clean conscience that there's a connection between investing in technology and increasing student achievement. We asked for feedback on this question. Continue investment in future focused technology tools for every student in the district, such as tablet, personal computers, most likely iPads, laptop computers, and wireless access to support mobile technology, resulting in upgraded instructional practices in all school buildings. Estimated costs, 1.25 mills, $5.21 a month for a home with a market value of 100,000. The last part of the survey really deals um, what they think are um, arguments for or against the millage. And then we ask them again to identify how they get communication from about the school system. 
is that from the traditional media outlets like television, uh, radio stations, we get very specific, and then just some basic identification information so we know who is filling out the survey. I want to be crystal clear about this. This is not to presuppose that the board would say we're going to go after any of this or all of it. It just brings some data back and puts it in your hands so as we strategically plan to meet the needs of our district, you have some accurate data from primarily the audience that we all serve, and that's the parents of our students, as well as a randomly selected group of uh, voters off the qualified voter list. So we hope you'll be pleased with that, and then it puts you in a position as we have to make some decisions. Um, it's been years, I think, that since we've done a survey like this, so this seems a good time to do it with things feeling fairly upbeat in the district. Back before well, 95, when we used to have real millages, we did this routinely. We would go out and do a comprehensive survey before we were in a proposal way, and that was the input that we used to figure out how we were going to move forward. So it's just been a while. So to end the meeting on a really positive note, uh, we know we like to talk about students, so I try to bring some things to your attention, uh, as well as staff also. So um, I'd like to draw to your attention that Susan Schaefer, a fourth grade teacher at Seabird Elementary, received the 2012 Odyssey Award for Excellence in History Education. Uh, each year, the Michigan Historical Center, together with the Michigan History Foundation, honors up to just three Michigan history teachers with this Odyssey Award. The award recognizes K-12 educators who demonstrate excellence in teaching and supporting Michigan history. Nominees are judged on their depth of knowledge about Michigan history, leadership in teaching others about Michigan history, and creative teaching methods. Awards, along with a cash gift of $500, will be presented to those recipients during ceremonies at their individual schools. Additionally, the awardees will be recognized and honors at the honored at the an annual Jingle Ball a fundraising gala event set for Saturday, November 17th at the Michigan Historical Museum in Lansing. If you haven't been there, you should go. It's a beautiful building. It's a beautiful museum. At Dow High School, uh, beginning in the fall of 1986, Richard Leach, some of you will recognize that name, uh, retired executive director of the Saginaw Valley Conference, presented the Richard Leach All Sports Trophies to both boys and girls in our Saginaw Valley League. His vision was to promote an all-sports program for all schools and school districts in the league. This past year, 11-12, H.H. Dow High School was fortunate enough to have both the girls and boys win the award. This is the eighth out of the last nine years that the girls at H.H. Dow have won this award, and 12th in overall, and the boys' eighth time winning the award. So kudos to them. Congratulations to them. Uh, also at Dow, Dow High School, the International Baccalaureate Theory of Knowledge students won awards for films that they made just here in the last week, depicting the, depicting the importance of cultural diversity. The films were shown and winners announced during the Art and Cultural Exhibition and Reception uh, last uh, Wednesday night on October the 18th at the Grace A. Dow Library. This event was sponsored by the Cultural Awareness Committee, which is, which is a project of the Midland Area Community Foundation. And then for some district recognition, but it really goes out to the elementary um, uh, schools when you think about it. Congratulations to all seven of our elementary buildings for achieving the bronze certification in achievement of Healthier U.S. School Challenge, H-U-S-S-C, by the United States Department of Agri Agriculture. Here's what the USDA had to say about the program. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge is a voluntary certification initiative established in 2004 to recognize those schools participating in the National School Lunch Program that have created healthier school environments through promotion of nutrition and physical activity. The HUSSC is a key component of First Lady Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign to end childhood obesity within a generation. Each of the MPS elementary schools will receive an award of $500 to use for a food service health nutrition purpose. A certificate of recognition, plaque, and banner to display from the USDA will also be given to them. Congratulations to these very deserving buildings. Thank you to Chartwells, our contracted food service provider, for completing the paperwork and nominating the MPS elementary buildings for the award. So Dr. Lifsit is here representing Adam, so you can take those kudos back to uh, your staff. Um, last thing, Central Middle School. Uh, two of the CMS students were honored at Delta College for being invited to participate in the Possible Dreams program. 
1991, the Delta College Foundation established the Possible Dream program. It was developed to encourage students to stay in school and realize that a college education really is a possibility for everyone. In 1992, the program began with its first group of 45 inductees and has since expanded to 410 students currently in that program. About 60 new students from Bay, Midland, and Saginaw counties enter the program each year. So congratulations to these very deserving students. And then, of course, we heard the reference to the um, uh, fourth state championship for the Dow High boys tennis team. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing. It's actually their fifth state championship, uh, I think, ever. And so it's an incredible strength. Tremendous expectation, I'm sure, on this year's junior class. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carl. You're welcome. Well, I said we'd get busier, and last uh, meeting was an anomaly with respect to the time commitment. Uh, it will get busier, as you uh, heard from Carl. We have some major decisions to look at and moving forward yet this fall uh, before those of among us who are uh, seeking board uh, seats. Uh, you'll have plenty on your plate in January, but we have some big, big decisions yet to make this fall. So stay tuned, uh, and I thank you for uh, your attention attention tonight and your attentiveness with respect to all that we had to consider. I'll take the motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. Support. Move to support it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Meetings adjourned.